What up guys, Jason Guyman here with King of Pressure Wash and tonight we're gonna talk about commercial pressure washing, how to get contracts and I'm not gonna go into the whole of every little thing but I'm gonna hit on the main parts of kind of the process, right? How do we get commercial jobs? How's the process work? Because a lot of times we look at this stuff and we're like, how do I do this, right? It, it's so overwhelming. And so I've actually got a little bit, I'm gonna show you some slides so that way you can see how this works and it's a little bit more visual tonight. So I've done a little bit more on my side of helping you grow your pressure washing business. My goal is to help you grow your pressure washing business. And so the last few weeks, I've kind of started through the whole process of how to how to do sales, how to do quoting, how to how to hire people. Last Sunday, I had hire chill on. Um, Sean, how to hire people, um, you know, and so how the equipment that we need. And so I've been going through of how to start a pressure washing business and be successful because you can start a pressure washing business and a lot of people have and they're not successful and they go out of business and that's not my goal my goal is to help you grow your business help you get to where you can have financial freedom where you can have time freedom right that is my goal to help you grow your business and be successful. And so with that, hope you all are having a great night. Um, one other thing I wanted to say is, is because getting commercial contracts and how to do this on my Monday Night Marketings for the month of February, I'm gonna go very in depth on that. Um, I had several people asking me how to do commercial and how to get those contracts. And so for the Monday night Zoom call, if you're part of King of Pressure Wash, you will be able to get to those plays. I give you, I'm going to show you how to use LinkedIn. I'm going to show you how to find phone numbers, how to find emails, where to look for, what different things you can do so you can grow your business doing commercial because commercial is one of those that it is very great to get um, you know once you start getting a little bit of commercial and you see how much money is being made and you will want more of it and so it is very important that you get to commercial work so you can keep your business going residential is very good for cash flow but commercial is more on the side of the high tickets and the really high tickets, that's what it's good for. This is how you get the $50,000 jobs. This is how you get to $100,000 jobs. You can get $200,000 jobs. And I know that sounds crazy to do a $200,000 job of pressure washing, but they're out there. Benjamin Gregory has gotten several of them. And he's nothing special. He's a guy that's got ADD, and he's gotten a lot of them. And so these are things that you, I want to help you grow your business. So today is day three of me eating right and exercising. Um, my goal is to keep eating right and exercising. I've been doing the carnivore diet quite a bit here. I've done it for a long time, and then I've cheated a bunch and it kind of got away from it. And so I went strictly back to meat for the 90% of my food. And so the last three days I got on the scale and it was like 280 and I'm like, oh, that ain't good. Um, so I'm back down to 275. I've lost five pounds in like three or four days since I've started this. And so it definitely is you know, and I've been kind of talking about it a lot on Facebook. If you follow me on Facebook, it is a journey, right? And I know it can be hard for a lot of people. And just like business, our health is your wealth. You know, if you have bad health, it don't matter how rich you are, how much money you got, it is definitely something that it can affect you and hurt you in the long run. So I'm trying to take care of my health and my goal is, is the reason why I've kind of shown everybody is, is I struggle with it. I'll be the first to tell you, I struggle with it myself, but it, it can be done. And you know what? Just like running the pressure washing business, you're going to struggle. And so there's not all these, these uh, unicorns and roses of all this stuff coming to you. It does take a work to be able to get this done, but 
I've been very well, and my goal is to keep it well. Um, today I went swimming. I did 40 laps. I did 100 pull, 101 pull-ups at the end of the pool um, and did 15 minutes in the sauna. And so it's one of those reasons I'm telling you is because I know I've helped you, a lot of you, lose a lot of weight too. And so that is definitely something that it can help you out a lot. Um, so I just wanted to hit on that just a little bit before we start hitting on the commercial. I always like to um, give you the book of the week. This week, I just finished it myself. It's called Law of Success. I'd highly recommend you to go read it. It's um, Napoleon Hill, one of his first books that he ever wrote. It was actually the book he wrote before um, Think and Grow Rich. So it is a very good book. I'd highly recommend it. It's definitely one of those books of can make you feel bad, but it's not the ideal to make you feel bad. It's start thinking different, start doing different so you can keep and growing rich, right? And what is rich? Well, some of it might be your health. Some of it might be your wealth. That is the things that you have to think about. And you can get in comfortable zones and fall or fail, and that's not the purpose of it, right? The purpose of this book is to help you keep growing and keep learning, and it's pretty awesome for you. So who do we have in here before we get started on landing commercial pressure washing contracts? We got Mr. Wet Windows. Let's go. We got hello from Palm Coast, Florida, Mr. Yas Enterprises. What's up, Mr. TCs? He's up in the Northeast. Um, give a thumbs up. I agree. Appreciate that. Wowzer Cleaning is present. Checking in from Rhode Island. I knew you were up north somewhere or out east. Hey, Jason, excited and ready to learn. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hello from Phoenix. No snow and it's warm there. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. How's it going, gent? Brooksville in Florida in the house. Hey, Jason. Hey, everybody. Hope you're all doing amazing. And I hope you're doing amazing also. Um, we got Foley, Alabama. Hello, Jason. Got a little $775 job from this coming this Monday. One-story house. Metal roof. I despise metal roofs. Uh, commercial is the only thing I want to do. I agree. It can definitely be good, but we'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of it. Thanks for your knowledge. A great birthday present for me today. Well, my happy birthday. My birthday was four days ago on the 20th. It was, um, what's up? Hey fam, the phone is ringing. That is awesome. That is amazing. I love it. Uh, you know, when you're, prolific relentless and consistent it's amazing how that works big time in the house oh yeah bring the big checks on this information is going to be so beneficial one month to kick in it what is up glad to make the show miss what's up precision power wash what's up been listening to you for years first time i caught live oh you a steak dinner if you ever come to lafayette indiana uh, there may be, let's see, that's up north, and there might be a time this year. Maybe we got to see. Um, how's it going, Jason? I was able to catch the interview with Browns. Very good. Yep. I was, if you didn't know, um, Browns um, pressure washing. I did an interview with him the other day on his podcast. Golf Shores, Alabama, checking in. We got a lot of people. I'm going to have to get started here. Chad, should I not go rip my competitor signs down? No, that is a big no-no. I hate winters. North Carolina needs to warm up. I agree with you 100%. I hate them too. North Michigan and can't wait for the snow to melt. Hello from Iowa. All right, so tonight's going to be a lot different. Um, I've actually done a little bit of different here for you to help you um, – see how this can help you and so i will be watching my comments if you got any comments on anything don't hesitate to ask them and i will get to you for this here so this right here was one of my very first commercial contracts i had never rented a lift 
to do pressure washing. I would never rented a lift in my life, period. And so this is when I was first starting out. This was around 2014. This is when we decided I wanted to start doing um, commercial, or this is when I wanted to start hiring employees. And this is actually one of my best friends right here. He's a teacher and he needed some money in the summertime and I needed some help. And so he came and helped me do this building. This building here is five stories, six stories, five or six stories tall. It's five, it's five stories tall, four stories on the backside. And so when I did this job, I was like, this is going to take us forever. I mean, I'm like, this is going to take us two weeks. And so we kind of bid it in that, that way. It was a $20,000 job is what we bid at this job for. And so the lift cost us almost two grand because we had to rent it for a week. And it was one of the best jobs I ever did because it realized that you just take one bite out of the time, right? And so when I did this job, we were there for four days and got it done. When we were on the back, I started on the back of the building because it was only four stories tall. I am not the biggest fan of um, of heights. Me and heights, I didn't like heights back then. I know I used to work on fire trucks and I'd go up in there and I didn't like heights. And so this was one that's the reason why we started on the back because it's only four stories. On the front, yes, it's five stories, but the way the lift was, we actually had to get a 130 foot lift to be able to reach it because the road went down and we couldn't reach a lot of it otherwise. And one of the big things with commercial is if you got a 60 foot building, you don't want a 60 foot lift because you're going to be very limited. So if you can get a bigger lift than where you're at, it does help you out in doing this. And so this was one of the buildings I did. Um, we had our helmets on and we had our thing on and we're almost done at this point. This was one of the last places that we did right here. And right before I took this picture, I'm up in this lift and the lift is shaking. And I'm like, why is this lift shaking so bad? And my buddy Jeremy's like, look at your knees. And my knees were down there going, <laughs> they were just sitting there shaking and the whole lift basket was moving. And so the reason why I wanted to tell this story is, is because this was kind of, of like $20,000 in four days, right? Now, I did screw up $2,000 worth of um, shrubberies and bushes that I had to replace. So I learned a lot on this. I learned how to get a lift. I learned what I needed. Um, I had to get the, the boards to put down because there was some um, places we had to go that was, you know, um, in the grass. Uh, I had to learn how to pull the hoses and keep a guy on the ground that could help the truck. And, you know, there was a lot that I learned off of this big job that looked like a monster when I got there. And so it's not, you know, that's the reason why I say a lot of times of how do we do commercial work? And it's one bite at a time, right? How do we eat an elephant is one bite at a time. And so these are things that you can do and it's not difficult. It's just a matter of a mindset and going and getting it. And those are the two things that I wanted to hit on. And it, we'll talk more about some more in here. So if you've done commercial work, put me in the comments that you've done commercial work. So that way I can see, or what? let's go this way. What's the biggest job you've ever done in a commercial job would be my question to you. And so that is my question to you to see what is the biggest job you ever done. So the first thing we need to do is we need to see why, why you know, what, what, what does the commercial mean? Why do we want to go after the commercial and understanding the market? The commercial side of pressure washing is a lot different than the residential side, right? Can we do it by numbers? Yes. It gets a little tricky at that point. You know, I know some people that will do it like 15, 
18 cents a square foot and if it's so much taller you know and the way that i always did it was i always tried to see how much i think i could do in a day i would charge two thousand dollars a day and i would figure it out that way now there is times that you know my calculations was off one way or the other I know that Benjamin, he charges $3,000 a day, or this was last year. He was charging $3,000 a day, plus he figured in his chemicals. So by the time he's done, he's about $3,500 a day is what he's charging. And so these are things that we can do to be able to start understanding how we can do this. So some key trends are, you know, the shift of the eco-friendly, right? That's that's a big thing that a lot of people want to do. And there's been times that, you know, we had to make sure our eco chemically friends and it didn't go down the drain and all of these great things that we had to do. And then, you know, the thing about this is too is, you know, if you look at outdoor of a building and if it's dirty on the outside, what do you think it's probably on the inside? And so these are things that we can do to be able to help us get more commercial work. You know, if you pull up to apartment complex and they're all green and nasty, what do you probably think the inside is? Well, if they don't take care of the outside, they probably don't take care of the inside, right? That's our first vision of our buildings are looking on the outside. And so collaborating with property managers, this was my number one thing. We did lots of apartment complexes. This is why I tell you, and I'll tell you later, uh, we joined the apartment association and we emailed the apartment associations. And, and so the apartment property managers were definitely my bread and butter. That is where I really focused at was in the part of property managers. Property managers, I did a lot of them. I was doing two to three hundred thousand dollars just cleaning apartments, and it's not. It's actually I shouldn't say it's not hard work. It's actually I think it's harder to do apartment complexes than to do four houses because you're on your feet and you're nonstop spraying. Right, you're spraying bleach on and you're spraying bleach off. And so these are things that when you're thinking about it, real estate agencies, I'm not so much on real estate agencies, but on this here, you can also look at the commercial real estate agents, right? Those are the ones I'm really looking for is the commercial real estate agencies. These are some places that they're going to know that the properties that they may need to clean. And a lot of these real estate agents, commercial own a bunch of this stuff, right? They already own it. And so that is why you have to go for those here. Facility managers, different things, all kinds of the healthcare, right? You can go by hospitals. Um, I had a guy on a couple years ago that he went after big hospitals and he did hundreds, he did not hundreds of them, but he's probably done hundreds of them, but he does tons of them and he does them over and over and over and he does very well for himself. He's hitting seven figures doing basically all the hospitals and stuff. You have the retail and a lot of that is your, the people that love, you know, just those storefronts. And this is where a lot of your window cleaners come in involved, where they'll go through and do routes of just all of the window cleaning. And you can even clean those buildings for that also. And so those are things that you can do. And then obviously we can offer specialized, you know, I was going to show one of my um, graffiti removals here, but it has a couple cuss words in it. And so that's why I didn't show that one. And so graffiti removal, a lot of times is more on the commercial side. You don't, you don't see graffiti removal on the residential side. Gum removal, that's a big one. Um, you got to have hot water. And so gum removal can be a huge one, especially if you get into the retail stores or the gas stations. And then last um, of the oil stain removal, right? A lot of your oils and stuff like that. So who are some of our clients? So restaurants, restaurants is a great one. Um, you can get on route jobs. There's times that I know people down, like I've said not too long ago, that they are down in Florida and they have like 
like 40 Taco Bells. And basically they go to each one. And by the time they're done, they come back and they just do this all year long. And they make three to $400,000 off of these certain Taco Bells that they go to this chain restaurant of there. So restaurants is definitely a good thing here. And so some ways that you can get into here is, is do demos, right? Go to that nasty dumpster pad and say, look, I can clean this up and just do a demo or go to their back door where, you know, all that slop comes out and do a demo, right? We're going to go talk to them and then we're going to go do a demo with them. So that way we can build that relationship. They may have somebody else. And you know what? The best time to go is, is if they have somebody else and it's still dirty and you go and you clean it and it's going to make it look 10 times better, right? And so restaurants is definitely something for route work to be able to go out there and do this. Retail stores, you know, your your Walmarts. Walmarts is a great part of this. You can get into it. Now, you got to have um you got to have the reclaim and you got to have different things for some of these places, but retail stores are a good source to do this. The the sidewalks, the front of the store, right? Because if it looks dirty on the outside, it's going to look dirty on the inside and then they're not going to like this here for the cleaning of it. Hotels and apartments. This was my bread and butter right here. I had, I did a lot of hotels and I did a lot of apartments. And so they're just big buildings, right? They're just big houses is all they are. They're big houses stacked on top of each other and you just got to figure out how to do it. You know, a lot of times you're using fire hydrants. So you got to go figure out how to go get your permit for there or how to go get your um water meter from your hotel for your hotels and apartments and you know more so on the apartments not so much on the hotels but some hotels are bigger that you know they don't always have um that and so when we're dealing with this you're dealing with the the exterior you're doing roof cleaning you're doing um sidewall cleaning you're doing dumpster pad cleaning you're doing gutter cleaning and so all of these things that we're doing can go into the hotels and apartments. Those are everything that we can do. Office buildings, again, office buildings, you know, these can be your little dental offices, your healthcare offices, your um, lawyer offices. Again, it's just a way to get into businesses. And usually whoever owns one will own a bunch of these little office buildings. Um, shopping centers, this was, an, we did several shopping centers. This is where you get into a lot of your gum removal. You also get into all your stucco buildings. And, you know, these are window cleaning, exterior window cleaning. This is where your shopping centers come into place. And it's a great source of money because whoever usually owns one, they own three or four of these things. It's, you know, when you start networking and you start building that relationship with any of these that I've talked about, you will get more of them. And when you start posting pictures of doing any of these and you start posting the pictures a lot guess what you're going to get it's like how i talk about residential when you post big pictures of houses and guess what you're going to get more big pictures of houses that's why we don't post a trailer that's why when you do some big building and you're up on the lift you're going to get pictures with you your employees that you're doing it safe that you're doing it right you're doing it properly you know don't be taking pictures of you up in the lift and you ain't got a, ha a, a hard hat on or you don't have a harness on or right these are things that set you apart from your competitors and it's important that you do this stuff gas stations i don't know um gas stations is a great one you know i know little's pressure washing does a lot of gas stations and if, if you want to learn how to do it he even teaches you how to do it he's got tons of gas stations I hate doing gas stations. That's not one of my favorite things to do, but there is a need for gas station. There's lots of gum, there's lots of oil, and the thing with gas stations a lot of times is they are sometimes cheap, and they want to be cheap. Um, but again, if it's dirty on the outside, what's it look like on the inside? And usually it will look dirty on the inside if they don't want to take it up. Industrial facilities, this can be huge, right? This is, um, you know, I went and did a video of cleaning some buildings with uh, Benjamin and it was a big industrial facility is what it was. Schools and universities, we did some work for UK and we did some down there. We did a crap ton of uh, 
um, sidewalks. Guess what? You take lots of pictures and videos of that because that also people will see that and you can tag UK and you can do that for those schools. Schools is a big one. You know, try to get there in fall break and spring break and those are the weeks that you want to clean those and those are great places to do. The healthcare facilities, right? The little dental offices, the little doctor offices. You know, one of my ment- one of my guys in my mentorship, he he does like twenty five thousand dollars, and he goes and does like ten urgent cares, right? And so ten or twenty urgent cares, and he, he makes twenty five grand, and it takes him about um, four. It takes him about two to three weeks to go do them all, but it's twenty five grand in those two or three weeks, and so. Those are different things that you can do. And then obviously government buildings, right? And you got to know how to bid these things. You got to know how to get into these places. You got to know how to uh, uh, deal with those people, right? You got to know who the right person is to talk to. You got to know their budget. You got to know how they bid it, right? If it's over a certain price, you got to bid it. Well, if it's under that price, they don't have to bid it out. And so you may need to lower your prices a little bit, or maybe we do it in chunks. This month we do this, next month we do here. So that way we can, you know, work with these people. And so it's important that we work with them and make it easy on this here. And so how do we get this stuff? Well, building relationships. This is how we do this. There, there really is no like easy go how to get this. You know, the indes- go to the apartment association. That's what I did. We went to the apartment association. They do trade shows. You can go to that trade show, meet apartment owners and meet these people. And and maybe it's something else. Maybe it's the, um, um, shoot, what's it called? The That owned commercial buildings, the IREM, right? You can go there and see if what they've got. Um, just join the associations. Join whatever association that is in charge. And usually every bit one has these different things. And so if you're not in the apartment association, I would highly recommend you to go get in the apartment association because that's a place that you can go meet people. You got to build relationship. When this here, when you get, again, if they own one building, they probably own 10 buildings. And if you do an amazing job on one building and you make your life easy and you make it simple, they will hire you for all of those other ones. But if you do a crappy job and you don't do a very good job and you're not, and you suck at communication and all of these things, guess what? You're not building relationships at that point and you're going to have issues and you're not going to grow. So, you know, offer your value, right? What is your value that you can offer to make you better than your competitor, right? Because you're going to have competitors bidding this stuff out. And some of them are going to be cheaper. You know, the one building that uh, Benjamin did it for $172,000, $172,000 out of Dayton, there was three people bidding this building. And every, he was the most expensive bid out of it by like fifty to $75,000. And so he was able to go do a demo and do it better and tell them why he can do it better. And guess what? he got the building. And so, and he's gotten several other jobs because he did a $175,000 building. Imagine you post in this big giant building of you cleaning it. Do you think that's going to get other attention if you posted a bunch? Absolutely is. And that's how you're able to keep building that momentum and keep doing it. And from there, he got jobs doing um, roller coaster because someone was asking him about, and they were in a board meeting and he was asking about who could clean my roller coaster? And this guy's like, this guy can do big jobs, right? That's how you build that, that network. And that's how you build that community around you that you will get all of the big work from that. And so those are ways that you can do this. Again, we have to communicate. We have to communicate, communicate, communicate. 
Um, and so it is definitely something that we need to follow up. We need to be top of mind. We don't just follow up by email. We text them or we, we call them. We show up every so often just so that way they know what it is. The National Apartment Association or the, are there, there, there is local ones. A lot of like, right, like Greater Cincinnati is the Greater Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, Dayton um, Apartment Association. And so that's, that's, there's a lot of local ones that you can go to. And there might be two or three and you might want to see which one does a lot. If they don't do a lot, don't be part of it because they're not going to help you out anyway. So you want to be a part of people that are local to you that are making sure that they are doing the networking and they're having the meetings and ours had golf outings and ours had a reverse dating like thing where you would go to the table and you got two minutes or five minutes to talk to the owner of all these apartment complexes. I got over a hundred thousand dollars by doing that one thing of going, talking to all of these apartment complexes. And so this is how you are, should be able to do the same thing. Also. So, this building here that I've got pulled up here, it was a big building that we cleaned. Um, we learned that not all exterior windows can be cleaned by um, by a water-fed pole. And yes, it could be cleaned by water-fed pole, but it would have took us forever. And so we just said, hey, we'll knock off two grand and we're not going to do your windows for this. And so there's always a learning curve, right? And so the interesting thing about this building also is the two employees that are in this basket right here were literally hired like that day or the day before. One of them still works for the company. Um, and this, and he's been there a long time now, but he still works for the, the company. He was one of my best employees of, I could send him out and put as much work on him and he'd be back by three o'clock every day it didn't matter and he had very few callbacks so that was very good he was one like i say he was my fastest christmas light installer and he was my fastest um pressure washing person too and he did a great job of making sure people got it done and so the funny thing about this one here is is also these two were the two that when i was talking about employees last week these two were the two that i had the most issues with so the one that was my great employee and the other one, um, it was his girlfriend and they slept with other people and it, then he broke up with him. And it, it was a whole cluster is what that was. So that's the joys of running a business and having employees is you get to deal with the drama that goes along with it. So what are the benefits? What are benefits that can offer your services, right? First off, it makes it look better, right? Look at this building up here. You can see up here, you got the, um, I don't know if it'll click in there or not. Oh, it will. Um, it, you got, you know, the, the before and after, right? Here's the before and here's the after. You can see how well this it did by cleaning this building. And so, you know, it makes it look so much better. It gets rid of the dirt and the grime and, you know, all the stains. Because, you know, if there's any rust stains on there, we're going to get rid of those. If any oxidation stains from these windows, we're going to get rid of all of that stuff. Or we can by understanding what the processes are to be able to do that. It expands the life of the surface. On roof cleaning, it keeps the building cooler, right? Because if you got a black roof versus a white roof, what it's supposed to be, now we, that's benefits that we can tell them that we can help sell for this here. It prevents damage, right? It, the bugs and stuff start growing and, and it starts festering. And that's a way that we can do this. So how can we have value proposition? A lot of us don't understand, you know, our pressure washing service provide a cost-effective and efficient solution to maintain the cleanliness of appearance of your property with our state-of-the-art equipment and team. We guarantee exceptional results and customer service, right? That's a value proposition. That's what we are going to give to them. We're going to guarantee them that they get exceptional results, not that ah, that's okay. We're going to guarantee that our employees are going to show up and don't look like bums, right? We're going to do things. You know, we had to, we put them in you know, uniform. They have a helmet on. We have all the things they need so that way they 
they can look professional. And the, the best thing that you can do is the last is the customer satisfaction, right? And talking with the customer and communicating with the customer can make sure that we get customer satisfaction. So this is the, probably number the one right here is understanding the client needs. And this goes back to shut up, let them talk and find out and ask questions of what do you need? Why do you need it? Do you need it because your boss is on you and doing it? Do you need it because you're not going to get your HOA or your um, HUD check because you failed inspection and they needed it done? They need it done this week or they're not going to get their $40,000 check for rent. Yes, those are reasons why you need to know because you may need to do this tomorrow or you might need to say, hey, we can push you off into my June, July, and August like I tell you to do with these jobs so that way you can do them then and keep your cash flow coming for the spring of those higher-end jobs, right? Highlight the value proposition. Why are you back to the, uh, the communication of the customer service and all of that and communicate, right? This one here, Communicate is probably the number one thing with these commercial people. You can't, you know, they need to know when they need to kick these or when they can have people walking in and out. They need to know if you need to shut anything down. They need to know all of this stuff way before, hey, I need to, I can't have nobody walking in here. They need to know that so they can put in their residence. They need to know that these five parking spots need to be closed off so I can park my trucks and my vehicles here or it's going to get me overspray on it. They need to know to be able to do that. Be prepared to compromise. Hey, you know what? If we get this, we can help you over here. We'll do that. We'll throw this in for free, right? I'll throw in these, these garbage, these, um, these, uh, dumpster pads for free. So that way I can be prepared to, um, kind of talk back and forth and then show your expertise, show that you are the expert. You are the expert. You know the chemicals. You know how they're going to react. You know what's going to clean what. You're going to show them how it cleans. You're going to make it and show that you are the expert. You understand how it is. But Jason, I've never cleaned a big building. Well, figure out how you know what you know, right? That's what it is. It's, you know, you might be saying, hey, Jason, I need a Zoom call with you. How much is it going to cost? I've had that happen. I got a, I got a potential of a, of a $20,000 job. I need to talk to you. All right. There's my hour zoom call and I'll sit down and I'll walk through with you and how to talk to them and what you need to look for. So that way you can ask the right questions so you can make sure you are ready to be for, um, showing the expertise offer flexible payment plans. You know, it's back to what I was saying. Hey, you know what? If you're at $5,000 over that, you got to get a quote. What if we do $4,500 this month and we'll clean this and then we'll bill you $4,500 this month and we'll clean that and then we'll bill buy, do $4,500 next month. And so now that's three months and now we've been able to offer Pay, flexible payments. Hey, you know what? We can do 30 days. Sometimes you might be 60. Sometimes you might be 90 days before you get paid. And so it is definitely something that the payment option, this is where a lot of people get in trouble is, is you don't get paid right away. If you don't have cash flow, commercial is not your best friend because you might be 30, 60, 90 days before you get paid. I knew somebody that was waiting almost six months on $170,000. So you got to be careful on, you got to be able to sit on that and pay your employees and pay everybody to be able to do this. Um, again, build long-term relationship, right? Don't just build for now, build it for a long time because if they keep using you, they may have five or six buildings and this is very important. And by building relationships, you will be professional and responsive, right? When you got to communicate because they don't want to wait six months. They don't want to wait a week for you to sit there and fiddle around. You should already know this stuff, right? Hey, when can I meet with you? Awesome. I'll have you a quote tomorrow. Awesome. I'll call you on to the next day. So you I just make sure you get it. And if you got any questions, awesome. We're coming in two weeks. Awesome. Hey, we're coming tomorrow. Awesome. 
Hey, we're here. Hey, we're halfway through. How's it looking? Awesome. Hey, we're done. How's it looking? Hey, here's the payment. How's it looking? Is there anything we can do for you? Awesome. Right? It's a process and you got to be responsive and you got to get things done to be able to go through this process. So on this building here, it was two and a half stories tall. We had to downstream this building. This was one that, uh, 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 or we didn't downstream. We had to use a, you know, four to 6% mix on this building. But the problem of it is it only shot up to about right here. So I had to come up with my um, ingenuity and I put a, my water fed pole and I put a line up there for my 12 volt so I could shoot all the way to the top. Otherwise I couldn't hit the top. And so this was another building that I had to use that instead of this one, we thought we was gonna get a lift, but where this hill was, you couldn't get down. This was a pretty steep hill here and there was no way to get a lift here. So that's why I was able to just put that up there um, uh, and do that right there. So, Closing the deal, finalizing agreements. Once all terms and conditions have been negotiated, it's time to finalize agreement. Ensure that all parties in agreement, right? Yes, you can sign contract. Most of the time you don't have to sign a contract. Um, it could help you, right? Because you're going to show what it's going to be. And a lot of this is could even be um, your invoice or your estimate, right? Your estimate's going to kind of go through what all you're going to do. It's going to break down, hey, we're going to do the exterior of the buildings. We'll make sure that all the, stuff, all the window seals are clean. We're going to do exterior window cleaning. We're going to do concrete cleaning. We're going to do... Um, the sidewall cleaning, right? We're going to do gum removal. Hey, if we don't do gum removal, it's going to be this price. And so these are things that we're going to make sure in that estimate. And then they can sign off on the bottom to make sure that they're good with it. And then we got to follow up, right? It, we got to see when that budget is. A lot of people right now are putting their stuff for budget for next year. So this is a good time to start going knocking on doors and talking to people, right? I talk about flipping rocks, and this is a great time to go flip rocks so that way you can find out when you need to do this stuff or how you need to do it, when you need to make sure that you come back to say, heck, hey, so when your budget is done, or they may have budget something from last year that a lot of times they wait to the end of the budget before they actually do it. So you may not have budget, they may not know you about you, but they need it done. They have a quote from last year. So that's why, but they've never called them back or followed up. You need to start following up of, hey, do you see that this building's dirty? We can clean it for you. Awesome. And so those are things that we got to make sure. Again, this is about building relationships, right? Securing long-term partnership. Build long-term partnership is crucial for the success of your pressure washing business. Provide exceptional service. Communicate 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 regular with your clients communicate and go above and beyond to exceed their expectations right do one extra thing that's like oh wow bring them out and say look how look how clean this building's coming don't get it all clean because then they forget how dirty it is that's why i took this picture because i can show look how dirty your building was before and after if they're there hey miss jones I just want to come out here and show you this building to see how what you're thinking about how well it's clean. Oh my God, I would never have thought that building come clean, right? Those That's the stuff that you're going to get out of this. That's how you're going to be able to make sure that you're able to get this. So why is it important to do, um, why is it important to do, why is it, why is it important to do commercial? It's, it's a great money maker, right? You can make a lot of money off of commercial. You can set yourself apart from your competitors by doing a lot of commercial. A lot of people are scared to death to do commercial. They don't know how to charge. They don't know how to make sure you got the right insurances. You know, you, sometimes you may have to pay five grand to get insurance to be able to do this. DJ had to pay a thousand dollars extra a year just so he can get a ghost policy for workers comp because they won't take an affidavit saying that he owns business and he won't do it. So he had to go buy a ghost policy for a thousand dollars 
to be able to go bid commercial work. And so you're going to have to do things that is a little bit of hard work to be able to get to what you need for your commercial work. So just some things to think about as we're doing commercial work. And it is an, a great thing to do that. And so will you have a transcript of notes? Yes. I, I always, um, if you didn't know, you can go check out kingofpressurewash.com slash blog or go look at it and you'll see the blog up there. And I always put the video in there and it kind of breaks down all the notes in from doing this here. And this video will be in there. And then I kind of talk about breaking it up a little bit from this video. So that's how you're able to see the notes for this. And usually it takes a couple days for me to get that done. My assistant does it for me. So there will be notes for it. I barely started to do my pressure washing business. So new to business. Its name is Twinkie Pressure Washer <laughs> Business. Hey, got to start somewhere. I created a folder that will contain a laminated presentation selling them the benefits of why hiring my company will add to their company image, right? That's what you got to do. We're not going to say how better we are over the competition. We're not even going to talk about the competition because if we talk about the competition, they may not know who the competition is. They may not even know there is competition. That's why we don't talk about competition. We're just going to talk about what we can do for them to make their building look amazing, right? We're going to keep it positive about us. We're not even going to talk about these people over here. We're going to talk about us so much that they're going to be like, man, that's a high standard. Because then when they go talk to the competitors, they're going to be like, well, are you going to do this? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to people can see that. But if we set the standard up here, it takes a lot to beat anybody when we set the standard up here, right? And so that's an important thing that you can do to make that happen. Hit the thumbs up button. All right. Um, what other questions you got on commercial? Nobody asked any questions. I need you all to ask questions because that also brings engagement. So that way I can get more people than 55 people on here. And other and it can help you out. And I brought a lot of value tonight. And if you all think this is good, let me know and what else I can help you with. And I will be bringing more value like this, probably a lot more on my lives versus me just sitting here being a talking head. Um, I feel like this can help you out a lot. And so uh, that's my goal. My goal in 2024 is, is that how can I help you get to $100,000 um, or a half a million? or a million. Um, and so those are things that I'm trying to do to help you grow your business. And so if you want to know more information and know when I go live on this here, you can go up here to, um, you can text me the word King. Um, where did my uh, thing go at? Text me the word King to 859-696. Um, one one zero one, and I will text you when I go live. So that way, I only text you when I go live on Sundays and Wednesday nights, right before nine. Um, but you can text the word King K I N G. You don't have to put the quotes on it. Uh, to eight five nine six nine six one one zero one. So when is budget for commercial buildings um, or for commercial properties? A lot of your apartments uh, budgets are like sept end of August and September-ish. That is kind of when they come. And usually the budget, that's about when like October is the end of September. First of October is kind of the deadlines for those people. How do you go about to market commercial clients on mass? Um, so I didn't go over that a whole lot. I may, I will be going over a whole lot at King of Pressure Wash at my, for the people that are in the membership um, next month for um, for my Zoom calls. The, all my Zoom calls are going to be all about commercial for the month of February because I do like commercial. Um, but to answer your question, because I do like answering your questions, um, you're going to do it through LinkedIn. You're going to do it through email marketing, um, but probably mostly through LinkedIn is going to be your best way to do it. And there's some tools out there that I will be showing you how you can use 
to help you with your LinkedIn also. Suggestions on making contact with corporate decision makers. A lot of it's going to be, you're going to have to go into these places, either that or LinkedIn. LinkedIn, a lot of times you can find a lot of this. Um, but like if you do the apartment association, there's time that you're going to be able to get to those owners versus just the, the low people of the apartment place. That's the manager, right? A lot of times we need to go the step above. Sometimes the managers can make it happen, but a lot of times it's going to be the step above that. I want to concentrate on fast food, dumpsters, and apartment complexes for my commercial side. What's the best step or steps? Um, well, for the apartment complexes, the joining, looking at your apartment or looking at your um, apartment association, that's step one. It, like mine cost $1,000 to join. Step two would be LinkedIn. Go get on LinkedIn and start searching for property managers in your area or your trite, wherever you are, and start friending them and start following them and start con commenting on their stuff and start just be showing pictures and doing all of those good things. On the fast food, you're going to have to go and probably go door knock, right? Go flip rocks, go talk to people, go figure out. Go network. This is the networking game. That's how you're going to be able to get those. You can also probably get these through LinkedIn too is a way that you can be able to get those. I've been getting churches lately. Pay well. Absolutely. Again, if you you if you live in an air if you live in the Bible Belt and there's lots of churches around you. Lots of churches will do a lot. Of, you can make a lot of money there too. So on LinkedIn, you can go find pastors. You can do that and post a you know. On, on all of this, on your website, you have a page all about church cleanings in your area. So that way, if someone ever types in church cleaning in Lexington, Kentucky, you've got a page that's going to show up because nobody else is going to do it. And so, and then you can start showing all the two different churches that you're done. And guess what? When they see that you've done all the other churches, they're going to be like, well, he must be the church cleaner. And so that's a good way to do that also. But also for commercial work, too, we're going to do the same thing. Look, Jason's doing pressure washing on this apartment building. Look, he's doing pressure washing on that building. And we're going to make pages of each one of those of where you're doing that. A full-time teacher, part-time washer, running a four-gallon a minute. Awesome. You can make lots of money doing this part-time. I've got a guy up in Indiana. He's the... Uh, He's the uh, the woodworking guy. Um, that's what he does. Teaches the high schoolers woodworking. Has a part time pressure washing business. He might have went full time yet. I don't know, but he's been doing it a long time as a teacher, and he's made over um, like one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars every year just working in the summertime and working on his days, you know, after school and stuff. Have you cleaned steeples or on, on or larger churches? Yes. And as someone else put in here, steeples suck. You almost need a lift for them because they get so, like the one I did, I nuked the crap out of it. I was like 10% just trying to get it up there and you can't reach it and the wind's blowing the bleach everywhere and you're already high so it's not going to shoot as high. I had extension poles on and I ate more bleach, I think, than got on the, the steeple and it sucks. And so that is why it is good to have a, um, have a, a lift on a lot of these and you got to have a tall lift because they're so freaking tall when you're up there um and then the other thing too is if you're on these churches and they got steeples and it's metal roof then it's a big slide a big uh, slip and slide so you got to be careful when you're doing this stuff when you're up there doing them but churches with uh that or larger churches yes i've done both those are your good money, and they're good money for Christmas lights. Any experience with condos? I assume they would be similar to apartments. Yes, exactly the same. You A lot of times with condos, those are the ones you will have to go and get the hydrant because a lot of times they don't always have water spigots. Do these jobs require a contractor's license? I have all the insurance a contractor would have, but I have not found it necessary to have a contractor's license. That depends on your state. If you're in Florida, you kind of got to have a contractor's license for pressure washing anyway. Anywhere else, like we don't have to have a contractor's license. You have to have the contractor's license you have to have is the one you go buy at the city building and, and you pay like $25 for. But we only two places I ever got stopped and worried about that. 
Part-time washer with a four-gallon minute cold uh, water machine. What's my ideal commercial target? Anybody that wants it. You know, are you the school teacher? If you're the school teacher, um, go try to find some of your schools, right? Those you have ends. You know the super. You know the superintendent. You know different people that you can get into those places a lot easier. You know you can go know the janitor. He might be the one in charge of it, right? These are places that you can go and to find these people. Um, where is the sign up to join the master class group? It's at kingofpressurewash.com kingofpressurewash.com um, laugh out loud I thought he meant church is chicken oh, uh, we don't have any of those I know what you're talking about we do storage facilities that's another great thing we are on their vendors list you you, you do have to jump through some hoops but well worth it they pay net 30 um, yes you can do good on theirs too we ordered a lift for every steeple we clean. <laughs> well, that's because you're so short, Chris. You needed to get up to the normal height. <laughs> I don't know if you all know Chris. He's about this tall on me. Um, we did a picture of us standing next to each other, and then he got on his chair, and then he was like my height. Um, <laughs> uh how would you clean Akaban on a commercial building? It sucks. That's how it does. Um, there is no easy way to clean that stuff. I hate it. I hate that stuff. I've. Mm, that's the epitome of everything on that stuff. We partnered with a tree company with a 115-foot lift. Works out very well so far. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So... You, you're so short, Chris. <laughs> he didn't even come back about it yet. <laughs> Am I going to get a text from him? <laughs> uh, uh, everyone about that tall on you, Jason. Yeah, everyone looks about that height. You're probably right. Sean has got old age, too. He's gotten shorter in his old age. <laughs> There we got a laughing, but well, I hope you all learned something today. I don't want you to just learn it. I want you to take action, right? Because you can learn all kinds of stuff. And if you don't take action, nothing happens. And so in this journey of the pressure washing journey, take action with dealing with big buildings. It's going to be scary. I promise you, you're going to screw stuff up. You're going to get the lift stuck. You're going to have to pay a $300 tow bill to get it unstuck. You're going to put the lift on a piece of concrete and it chips the concrete. It sinks it down. You do something, right? It's going to be scary. It's going to be hard, but you can do it. And don't be afraid to try and do it. You know, the only reason why you will fail is because you didn't try. So at least try and do it. That's going to be my goal for you. And I really, truly do want to help you grow your business. I don't care if you go to King of Pressure Wash or not. I'm going to be on here every Sunday night and every Wednesday night to help you grow your business. And if you don't grow your business, it's your fault. It's nobody else's fault. You can't say it's your area, all the other crap. It's your fault. And if you don't want it to be your fault, go take baby steps. Just start doing something, right? You will learn that as you grow in this business, it's great. There's days that you're like, you're on top of the world. There's days that you want to crawl under a rock and say, why the hell am I a business owner? This sucks. The tires blew out on the truck. The transmission went out of the truck. The pressure washer blew up. The, 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 you, you went through somebody's window. It sucks. I promise you. And it, when you, the sucky days come, it won't be one thing. It will be five things, but you know what? The reason why I tell you to get those reviews, that's the days you want to go look at that reviews and say, Look, Jason is amazing. He does awesome work. He is awesome. And you know what? You are awesome. Are you going to have crappy days? Sure you are. Are you going to have amazing days? Yes. Are you awesome? Yes. You 
are awesome. And that's why I love helping you and growing your business and making a difference in your life is awesome. When you can change your family tree to be an awesome, that is what I love about helping you grow your business. Will you speak on Octubon, please? Burn it. <laughs> so the the issue that you have is it don't it mystery clean is the only way that I've ever really had luck with it. You know, you can spray it with bleach, it ain't gonna change nothing. And I've taken poles and I've actually rented lifts and did hand hockey or hand Mr. Cleanness stuff. Um I don't I haven't paid attention to it. I still don't think there's a chemical out there that's just going to amazingly clean it. The water fed pole can help you some because it's got that pure water and it can help you some, but it is a pain in the butt. Can't wait to see you in Gatlinburg. That's in the end of next month. Yes, gave me some ideas and pointed me in the good direction. Amen. If you don't want to quit at least once a week, you're not trying hard enough. Isn't that the truth? Um, best AI software other than chat GPT. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there. This information tonight was priceless. I appreciate that, Brian. So with that, I hope you all have an amazing week this week, the rest of the week. And biggest thing I'm going to tell you is, is go take action. Nothing happens unless you take action and it's not always fun, but you can do it. Hope to see you on Sunday night and hope you have a great week. Talk at y'all later.